<laughs> All right, guys, I told myself I wasn't going to make a video. Uh, just excuse me, I'm under the weather, and I've had a really busy couple of weeks, so I told myself I wasn't going to make a video, but after watching 308, there's just too much I have to say <laughs> about this stuff. As you know, these clips are going to be relatively short. They haven't released the entire fight or any of the actual views, anything like that. They're worried about copyright soon, but we've got one overhand right here, and then we've got part of the actual knockout here. Okay, so this is going to be a part one video where we'll just look at some of these and then we'll break down the whole uh, part in part one. So, or excuse me, in part two. So as he pushes off the, the, his right leg onto his front leg, he loads that front leg. His hip is in relative extension. He's using muscles like the calf muscles, the gastroc and the soleus uh, in conjunction with the glute, the glute, a co-contraction between the glutes like the glute max, hamstrings and the quads all to create relative hip extension and knee, knee extension uh, to shift weight all the way over to the front leg. As he loads that front leg, we see his hip go into relative hip internal rotation. And this is as a result of, of global spinal rotation to the left. If you notice, he's starting to rotate to the left and, and initiate that punch or kind of take advantage of that kinetic chain from the ground all the way to the extremity. Now we've seen with Ilya Tapori before, he's really good at that shoulder separation. He takes advantage of the stretch reflex in the, in the muscles of the trunk, like the internal and external obliques. But here he doesn't do that. Okay, he's got, he's kind of holding Max's right arm here and that kind of prevents him from doing it. Also, this stance kind of prevents him from doing it, but he's got, a, his shoulders and his hips don't separate as much. Okay, so if you were to draw a line from hip to hip and a line from shoulder to shoulder, you would see that they're relatively parallel. As we move up, We've got that global spinal rotation, and we see the arm coming around for the overhand. So this is rel this is glenohumeral shoulder horizontal adduction with muscles like the anterior delt and the pec major. Now we also know that these scapular muscles have to be really engaged as he brings it around, just in order to make sure that whenever he does make contact, that reverberation that comes from the fist all the way down through his thoracic spine and into his body is, is really well absorbed. So these scapular muscles like the upper and middle trap and rhomboids have to be really engaged as he makes contact as well. He's using this left arm not only as a defensive measure, but as a way to kind of initiate a little bit of shoulder extension to kind of whip his body around and increase the amount of torque about his, the axis of rotation, which would be his spine and he makes really good contact on Max. This made Max stumble pretty much for the first time I had ever seen before uh, in the way that he did. Uh, so this was just a really, really nice, well put together overhand. And now I'm starting to run into a problem where I have more questions than I can answer pertaining to injury advice, biomechanics, anatomy, etc., which is a good problem to have. Up until this point, I've answered almost all of your messages. However, I'm still doing this part time and seeing patients. So I'm running out of time during the day. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to stop answering questions on my Instagram DMs and my email. So if you have questions for me, I've created a Patreon account. There's only one tier, which is set at $5 a month. So if you just want to generally support or you want to be a part of the only place that I'll be answering questions, consider checking out my Patreon. Now back to the Breakdown. Let's move to the portion of the knockout that we actually can see. Uh, now you'll see that if we bring it too far back, it kind of starts when he makes contact with Max's face. Uh, so we don't get to see the really good mechanics uh, of Taporia's boxing from this, but I saw it in the fight and I know it's there. So whenever all of the views come out, we'll watch that. But, so this is just going to be part one. One of the main things I want you to notice, though, is how much cervical rotation happens here whenever he clocks Max with his glancing blow. So he catches him on the jaw, and he, he goes from pretty much what we would call neutral. So he's looking, this is about, this is zero degrees, degrees of cervical rotation to 90 degrees of cervical rotation and a little bit of lateral flexion. You can see that as well in less than half a second. And so that rotational force, that really quick accelerating rotational force pulls on the axons or the nerves that kind of lead up to the brain and is what we think as far as we know causes that acute loss of consciousness. And so this was a really good view of that and I just wanted to make sure that we saw that beforehand. And of course we see Max or we see Ilya Toporia finishing uh, that left hook but it, it, this this view doesn't really do it justice. When it comes out, we're going to watch uh, a part two and break down the entire the entire thing. But what a what a great fight to watch! 
uh, with, a, with a great ending. Taporia deserves every bit of it. Really cool stuff.